A good day to each and every one of you and welcome to 21st Century Literature. And today we will be discussing about the fiction analysis. Okay, the fiction that we have watched last time, or I'm sorry, that we have read last time. Okay, it is entitled The Presidente Who Had Horns. Okay, and uh, we learned something from it. And I know that you have uh, read something about it and uh, you, you got something about um, leadership while you are reading it. Okay, so as a leader, the question is, what characteristics should a leader possess? Okay, we believe that we have our own perspective and our own idea of what a good leader is. And by learning... Um, the things that uh, a leader should possess, I know that we can impart that to ourselves also. And uh, um, we learn something about it in the text that you have learned. And now, in analysis, or in analyzing the fiction that you have read, okay, these are the things that you need to remember. The first thing is knowing the author. Okay, you have to gain background information regarding its author. Although, in this text, we don't have an author because it is a general literature of the Ilocanos. If you're an Ilocano, I hope, and I am really hoping that you have an idea about it. So, But if you don't have any, but um, lucky you because you have read it um, firstly, you know, or firsthand, um, know the writing style and type of works he or she has developed. We are talking about the author here. So by knowing the writing style of the author, you, you know why he is doing that or why, why there are some parts of the story or the literature which has the things that you have noticed, you know? And uh, we don't have any author at all. So we know that these are just Ilocanos and we can just assume, okay, this is just an... Um, we are just assuming in here that when we are talking about literatures in the Ilocandia, you know, um, we know that uh, their literature talks about leadership, most of them, because um, there are a lot of good leaders that came from there. So when we when we are reading about it, when we read the word Ilocano, probably there is one specific thing or one specific literature that we are um, aiming for, which is it talks about leadership. Right? So, another thing, not only knowing the author, but we also have to examine the title of the work. And uh, by knowing the title of the work, we can also know what is the content of the text material. Think of what the title wants to, uh, to reveal about the story. So, a Presidente, and then the word Presidente there is italized. Why do you think it is italized? So, in, in the original title of it. It is really italized, you know, probably because it's a Tagalog word. And why Why didn't they, they just use the word president? Why president? So th these are just some of the questions that we need to ask um, while examining the title of the work. So it's up to you and how you're going to interpret the title. Okay, um, horns. So what do we mean by that? Okay, okay, so this is just how you examine the title of the work. The next thing is to read the entire work. You cannot understand the entire text of, or a literature if we don't read the entire work. To have a clear picture of the story, it must be read from the beginning uh, to the end. Okay, so you don't just um, have to create a shortcut where you read the beginning and then you jump up to the end of it. No, you don't do that. Some people, they also read the beginning, they read the middle part of it, and then the end part of it, and that is how they want to understand it. But there are some um, structures of a story which has, um, like, which has a foreshadowing, we have the... Um, flash forward and something like that, or flashback. Um, so you really need to read the entirety of the text so that we can understand it. To have a clearer picture of the story, it must be read from the beginning up to its end. Okay, next is you have to feel the scene. Okay, While reading the material, the reader has the ability to situate 
himself or herself in the realm of the story. You go in that realm, in that world. So if it is a fiction, of course, it, it's not a reality. Okay, You go to that world, you imagine, you immerse yourself to whatever world the author have created. You have to feel the scene. Okay, If, if there are some descriptions in there, descriptive words in there, you have to feel it, you have to smell it, you have to see it so that you can be one with the story. You, you don't just read it literally, just like you don't understand anything. What you have to do is to imagine that you are part of the story. And also, the next one will be be familiar with the characters. Knowing the characters is very important when we are um, analyzing a fiction. Why? Because you have to be familiar with it. You have to examine how characters respond, react, and behave in the story. So if the character is responding differently from your point of view or from, um, from the standard way of responding, probably it is part of the character's attitude. It, it is part of the character's character. Okay? And how these characters are reacting to one another, we can, mm, we can analyze what type of characters they are. And we will be learning about the type of characters sooner. And also, why the characters are behaving this way. So you really have to be familiar with them. How these characters are thinking. Why they are talking this way. Why they are doing those things that they are doing in the story. Next, you have to note the flow of the event. The reader must take notes as to how the story starts, moves, develops and ends okay how the story starts usually the the basic way of making a story you have to start the story with introducing your characters and introducing the setting sooner we will be talking about the plot but anyway so that's it that's how you start the story you introduce the characters the main characters probably some of the um, intriguing characters. You can also put them in the story in the beginning of it. And it, it is a different way of introducing the plot, if ever, that you're going to introduce the villain already, you know? So that's the flow of events and the moves. How is it? What's the facing of the story? Is it fast? Is it slow? Or is it just in a normal way? So are they being, um, you know, um, told in a, a quick manner so you have to think about those things and then do you think the story is developing do we have any climax on it do we have any improvement when it comes to the story of it so it or is it just a plain story with no interesting or development at all okay and of course at the end Okay, um, is also important because knowing it, knowing the reason why it end, ended that way um, may give you an understanding of the reasons why the, the literature is made. Okay, and the next one will be pay attention to some techniques in the plot development. We're going to talk about the plot. Okay, um... But just a few of it, because we're going to talk about the parts of the plot sooner. Huh? You take note of the concepts of flashbacks. What do we mean by that? Prolipsis or foreshadowing. Okay, we also have the stream of consciousness and other techniques. So let's talk about the flashbacks. So you, you, you think about um, a story where it has a flashback. Because I have read a story... Uh, the title is Big Sister. Okay, I I think we're gonna read that one. The Big Sister. So it, it talks about the present story, and then it um it turned out or it it was developed to the uh, flashbacks of it. There are a lot of flashbacks, and uh, yeah, flashbacks of it, and then. We have the foreshadowing. A prolipsis is when we talk about prolipsis, these are the part of the stories or the way 
um, the narrative way of telling the story in a future manner. So it's not yet happening, but you are telling it already. So that's it. And foreshadowing, we also have that in stream of consciousness and other techniques. So you have to think about those. And we're going to talk about the techniques of plot development further um, when we are discussing it in the class. Okay, if you have any questions, you just have to, you know, um, write it in the comment section too, and I'm going to answer it for you. Next, look at the symbolisms, images, and themes used. Okay, talking about the symbolism, so when we read the uh, reading material that we had, okay, the Presidente, um, these are possibly presented by an object or a word in which the meaning goes beyond the literal sense. But when we are talking about literal sense, like for example, the word flower, flower represents a lot of symbolisms, even its colors, even colors have symbolisms, you know? So when we talk about giving flowers, so it talks about being romantic. So if the color of the flower is red, somehow this, um, this is just my own perspective of it, and uh, we know that it is like that. So if a, we have a red flower, this represents love, affection, and uh, sometimes when we have white flowers, it represents a different thing. So we can talk about death in white flowers, yellow flowers also got those. And let's proceed to the colors. When we say red, uh, when we say green, okay, it, it represents wealth. When we say yellow, it represents joy. When we have a red, it represents, you know, for some businesses and restaurant businesses, when you say red, it means hunger. So that is why a lot of um, restaurants are using red color because psychologically speaking, it um, it talks about hunger, you know. So it, it deals with the um, hunger. So that is the color red. And a lot of symbolism is in images. You know, when you are reading, what does a bamboo mean? What what do you think does a fish mean? And in our story, what do you think uh, does the horn mean? Okay, so you can type your answer in the comment section uh, on whether what the horn represents or symbolizes. Okay, next, study the writing style of the author. Knowing that the author is Ilocano generally, you know, you have to, you, you can try um, searching for Ilocano writers and try to connect their similarities, but that, that is a quite a tremendous work, but of course, if you can, you can do that, but you can also just look at how Ilocanos are stereotyped, probably, but we are, I am not promoting stereotyping in here, but of course, you can Talk about the good values of these people and try to understand the text by knowing them, okay? And trying to know the style of the author, but we don't know the style of the author in here because we don't have the author at all. And next is interpret the purpose of, or uh, the purpose for writing. Why do you think the material is written? The reader can say your mind and the possible reason of the writer for writing the, te the text based on what you understand regarding the work's theme. If the theme is about literature, okay, so what, what do you think um, does the author wants us to realize of that? Um, why do you think this text is written? What's the reason behind that? What do you think the author wants us to do? What do you think the author wants us to understand about the leadership of this president in that town? So that is interpreting the purpose or writing. And lastly, we have to judge the quality of the text. In your case, in your own perspective, do you think that the text got an impact to you as a reader? How does it impacted you as a reader? Um, what are the thoughts that have been changed after you have read the text? So that's how you read a fiction. That's how you analyze it. You don't just read the fiction literally and get the literal meaning of everything there. You know, interpreting it and judging the quality of the text depends on all the aspects that we talk about a while ago, starting from knowing the author, you know? 
you can say that the quality of the text is good if we got majority of these aspects. Okay, majority of these things on how to analyze. Okay, so one good thing, like, like for me, it is um, somehow this text is not uh, that good. Why? Because I really don't know who the author is and I don't know why uh, the reason or the possibility why the author wrote certain texts. Okay, it is just Ilocano, so how will I know what's the style of the author? I, I want to know why the author is writing um, such kind of text. Why the author put a horn on the head of that Presidente? So that's my question, okay? So in my case, there is just a so-so. If I'm going to grade that one, so probably I can give, a, I give an 85% out of 100 in this literature. But this story is really good. So now, um, after... Um, reading or after knowing this one, after knowing all of this um, fiction analysis things to remember, um, I want you to write a bit of your thought of this literature. Do you think that this literature has a quality? Okay, um, emphasize it in the comments. Actually, write it in the comment section. You write it down there and uh, tell me whether you like it or not. I hope you learned something today or you learned something about this topic. Um, if you learn um, something about it, thank you. But if you want to learn more about it, you can just type your questions in the comment box. So thank you so much and see you again on our next lesson. Bye.